You're listening to the Australian Water Association podcast series. My name is Peter Dredge and joining me is Nathaniel Jenkins, Customer Experience Design Lead with the Customer Direction and Experience Team at Sydney Water, and Greg Priestley, Innovations Project Manager, Networks Assurance within the Networks team also at Sydney Water. And we're discussing the importance of engaging customers around innovation. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank you. You're both involved in a case study at Sydney Water. Can you give me some background around the study, in particular it related to maintaining continuous water supply during repairs or shutdowns, is that correct? Nathaniel? Yes, that's correct. Uh, at Sydney Water, we've been looking at um, really putting a lot more emphasis on customer centricity, and that requires to identify some known customer needs. So we ran a series of forums between uh, well, throughout most of 2018, and one of the key things we learned was that customers wanted a continuous supply of water. We do provide that for most of the time. In Australia, we're very lucky that when we turn on a tap, water is available, but there are times that we need to fix leaks or replace pipes. And traditionally, these repairs require turning off water for some customers so that crews can work. What we really wanted to do is do a step change and figure out how we could avoid that negative or bad experience altogether. And that's when I teamed up with Greg, because uh, Greg in his area had some familiarity with some implementation or some innovative tools that could have been borrowed from another industry that could help us avoid this. And uh, so really save uh, millions of dollars per year in efficiency, as well as help thousands of customers avoid water interruption. Greg, could you describe um, the sort of technology that you incorporated into the study? The bypass system was actually initially made by uh, made for the gas industry by uh, Sarco, and then when they realised that you know there was some benefits in the water industry, Sarco actually developed uh, the the water main bypass system. It's also uh, a picture of it in the full paper, but this this uh, bypass tool basically. Uh, utilizes main pressure to inflate a balloon, stopping the flow of water whilst keeping continuity of the water supply. And, uh, and out of this, you're able to minimize the customer interruptions and in supply. And this system is what you also refer to inside Sydney Water as Water Wizard, is that correct? Yeah, so the, the, the Water Wizard, we, we've uh, lovingly named it. <laughs> And describe for me like a typical example where there might be a, a row of um, residential properties um, that we would um, historically always have to be cut off. Yeah, so for us, a good scenario is if, if you have some critical customers on the line, uh, uh, just like doctor surgeries or hospitals or whatever. You know, if, if traditionally, if you went by traditional methods and you shut the valves and the customers maybe affected with, with no war or most of the time are so by using this technique we're actually focusing on the area where the the brake or the, the the fitting that is to be renewed has occurred and we're really reducing the the footprint of the the shutdown can you just talk me through what data you actually extracted at the present time from uh, last november uh, the analytics are telling us that, or the data, sorry, is telling us that we've actually not affected 120,000 customers. So that in itself is a, wow. is a massive benefit, uh, especially when you don't have to uh, pay back the rebates. Do you have a number around the number of hours that customers would have been without water based on that 120,000 properties? Um, that you didn't impact? Uh, Nathaniel, can you answer that one? 456 hours um, that have been avoided in terms of uh, disruptions to water. Greg, when we look at the specific um, product technology that you utilized that you said had previously been used in the gas industry, where did you find this product and was it in use anywhere else in the world? I actually came across this product uh, being used in uh, the UK and, and Europe and South Australia. And uh, I could see that 
the, with the situation that Sydney Water was in at the time that it, it could really benefit what we're doing. But you know, it was it was difficult to kind of gauge that until I actually seen it, and it was it was quite difficult to get that into the field because it's that. It, it, it's a pro it's a process that people do all the time and it's an old process but bringing this yeah. new process in was a was a real challenge because it was like a, a mindset change and a cultural change and talk about that resistance to change from long established practices within workforces what sort of techniques did did you use to bring sydney water workers along the the way I went about it was I got the guys, the field guys involved, you know, so they they're always involved in the process, and they always had buy into it, and they were always flexible when it came to to changing that process. So I adapted yeah. the process for and about you know current uh, practices that you use, and then they've got to know that uh, you know after a period of time the they then felt passionate about it because they could see there was a lot of benefit to them and the customer, you know, and, yeah. and they, were, they were just proud to be part of that that rollout. It also uh, raises the capability level within your teams as well because it's 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 not an easy task to to use, you know. So it's quite technical. Sure. And there's an image that we have on the full paper of a full setup um, so that sort of people can go and sort of picture what this sort of kit looks like. I want to focus back on the customer, Nathaniel. How did you uh, extract some buy-in, including their feedback? Talk us through some of those steps. Yeah, sure. I, I guess we'll talk maybe sort of two steps. And the first one kind of goes to the beginning where we were going out to sort of advisory series and forums and, and group discussions with customers to trying to figure out what was important to them. And, you know, not a, not experiencing water disruptions was, was a, one of the, the big ones. So then we took that back in and tried to figure out how we could avoid that, from which um, working with Greg and the team, we found this tool. But we needed to then sort of circle back to the customers and figure out what does that interaction point look like. So what we're doing in this scenario is pretty much customers don't even know we're there anymore unless they see a truck outside working. Um, you have pressurized water as always. So we didn't necessarily know what that kind of interaction needed to look and feel like. Do customers want to know we're there and working even if they may not experience us. Sure. And the answer to that was pretty much no. Uh, we circled back and we sort of explained a scenario to them and said, look, this is what's going to happen. Um, there's some work we have to do, but you won't notice it. How do you want to be contacted? And they pretty much said, we don't. We don't want to be contacted. <laughs> so that would, that's wow. an okay answer, of course. Um, but what they did say is uh, they were actually quite interested in having their voice be heard and kind of co-creating this. If they had a disruption of any sort, they wanted us to message them, give them the specifics of why it's happening and and um, what we're doing to resolve it. But if life goes on for normal, then um, they don't want to hear from us. But that's that's an okay outcome for us. And we actually find that by including them in that decision-making process, Yes, it is less work for us. We're not communicating to them, but we end up with happier customers because they're absorbing the uh, the solution in the way that they want it, if that makes sense. Surely there's some part of you, though, that wants to be telling more and more people, look at this great job we're doing. You're not being interrupted. <laughs> um, yeah. Have you found a way to make sure that the message is getting through at some level? <laughs> in that sense, things like this sort of... this podcast and a forum and there is information that we can communicate that we are uh, attempting to um, use innovative tools to fix the customer problems um, through mm. the news and other things of this nature but it's also not necessarily a good outcome if somebody tells you that they don't want to hear from you and you're so proud of yourself that you need to tell them you might sort of risk yeah. damaging that relationship so yep. it is really it is an interesting sort of balance um but 
the good news is is when you're a water utility, a lot of the bal a lot of that sort of interaction tends to be sort of unmemorable moments or things that are painful, pain, bills, loss of supply, things of this nature. So if you can actually reduce that sentiment of negativity, um, people will listen to you in other channels and other avenues when it matters most. So in Australia and Sydney, we had a drought recently, and I believe our marketing team has had fantastic results. Um, engaging with customers as a source of truth. So you might not be able to communicate to them directly that you're um, fixing their problems without them noticing. But when you need them to notice or focus on something else, that's where the trade-off comes and people are more willing to listen with an open ear because they weren't upset in another scenario. What about um, post this study, how extensively is the water wizard being used throughout Sydney Water's network? We have three specialised teams that that work with uh, the water wizard. The three crews are actually out on the road every single day, renewing valves, renewing hydrants, uh, fixing reactive brakes. You know, our, our challenge now is to is to train more people and get more more equipment in. And to to fully utilize that for the benefit of the, the the customers in our business. Yeah, we're moving up to about um a twenty percent and uh, a, a twenty percent of all jobs being done with this tool. But what I think that we've been a bit different for is not just um not just buying the tool and using it, but it's really about how we set ourselves up. And uh, you know, when Greg says we've got a specialized team, that that was the the big change, I think, for Sydney Water and the thing that we've done um, incredibly well that helped us learn a lot is not just necessarily to bring a tool into the building, but give people the training and the time to use it and then start to adapt it so that it works for us as an organization, changing who does the work, when they do it, how it's done, uh, giving that space um, for staff, a section of the staff to kind of step aside and, and do something different. That gives the organization a chance to take some calculated risk. And uh, and that's where the real benefits have been delivered. So Nathaniel, uh, what's next? Um, there's obviously been some great success around this case study and the Water Wizard. Um, what's next in terms of this technology? We, we've been a uh, sort of progressively growing this out, um, we want to expand this innovative capability because when we reach to a fuller capacity, we will be saving Sydney Water millions of dollars per year and avoiding service disruptions for hundreds of thousands of customers. And in our research, we've learned a lot of sort of things that the customers wanted, and not all of them are, are as big as, say, avoiding water disruption. So there's a number of small things that we can sort of work on as well as we roll out this capability across the business. You must be a great news story at Sydney Water. Do you want to elaborate on that one, Greg? <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you rock stars in at Sydney Water? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I think, I think from the get-go, we really we took a, a real low-key approach because, you know, when you're bringing tools like this into a large organisation, people can get really excited really, really quickly. So, you know, I, I think the low-key approach was good for us. It was the whole slow down to speed up. So get used to the equipment, yeah. get get the engagement from the field, you know, change the, the culture mindset on the way, you know. And I, I think we're at a good point now where, yeah, we're, we're ready to kind of spread the word and our, our success. So not necessarily everyone in Sydney Water knows exactly what we're actually working on because we did take that low-key approach and I think that was a, a very calculated approach by us. <laughs> That's great. Makes sense to me. I've been speaking with Nathaniel Jenkins, Customer Experience Design Lead within the Customer Direction and Experience Team at Sydney Water and Greg Priestley, Innovations Project Manager, Networks Assurance within the Networks Team also at Sydney Water. Thank you both for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.